Habarenu? Great, so my name is Chris Senanu. Or Senanu. Whichever way it comes out. Um, popularly known as Ole Senanu. Um, I'm Ghanaian by birth, I'm Kenyan by choice, I'm African. That's all that matters. And very soon, hopefully, those um, interesting straight lines that were drawn in Berlin in 1844 will no longer define who we are and what we do. I believe as an African, I'm comfortable in any country in Africa. Today I was asked to speak about how we can get SMEs in Africa ready for global dominance or ready to move into the global space. And as I thought about the subject, I asked myself, what exactly is the challenge that we're trying to address? And in my thought process, I always like to think from the smallest unit, the clan, the community, the county, the country, and then finally the continent. And ask myself, when we talk about moving Africa's SME to dominate the globe, what globe are we talking about? Because when I look at it critically, the research shows we're looking at 1.4 billion Africans. So when we talk about global domination, does it really have to be out of Africa? In most cases, I don't think so. I think we have enough market in Africa for ourselves. What if we started looking first within the regions, the regional blocks that we have, and then secondly, continental? And I think that's the reason why the Africa Free Trade Area, the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, is a very critical thing for people starting up businesses at this point in time. Because this gives us an opportunity of a 1.3 billion market. A market that is full of youth. A market that is full of people who want to buy, people who want to experience goods and services from the continent. And if we have doubts about it, we should just look at the statistics from all the multinationals who are falling upon themselves and trying to come onto the continent. Why are they trying to come? Because they see this is the last frontier. This is where the opportunity is. This is where the growth is. So, to the topic, empowering African SMEs to conquer global markets. The first thing I want to say is that as we think about going out there globally, if out there is outside the continent, first remember that the big market exists on the continent. It's a 1.3 billion market and it's ready for you and your business. And so the question becomes, what is the challenge for African SMEs? What is it that prevents them from scaling up, from growing? What does the research show? I posit that the real challenge in access, in, in growth, is really access. Access to four key areas, or rather five key areas. Access to information, access to markets, <coughs> access to finance, and access to networks and strategic partnerships. So let me try and double click on a couple of these this morning. Access to information. Why do I start there? I start there simply because I believe that a lot of companies on the continent would be much bigger if they were only to know how much market they can get in the neighboring country. Growing up in Ghana, one of the things that was very clear, when you, if you're a youth in Ghana, your first thought is, when I'm done with high school, I'm going to the US, I'm going to UK. 
Why? Because there's a perception in Africa that there's something better out there, outside the continent. Luckily for me, I grew up in a home where we did do a lot of travel. And my father insisted that anytime you went off the continent, you had to visit a, at least one African country. I've currently visited exactly 27. I do believe that without a shadow of a doubt, I will hit my target of visiting 54 African countries before I pass. And the simple reason is that there's a lot of value in understanding our rich culture and our heritage and understanding markets. For me, it's about business. Um, so, access to information. I believe, without a shadow of doubt, that for you to do big business in another country, you need to know people. And to know people very well for you to do big business, you need to visit them in their own environment. You need to be with them. You need to understand them, their culture, their habits, and the way they do what they do. And so we have this really interesting uh, African saying where we say, travel and see, travel and meet, travel and engage. And so I want to encourage everybody over here, start your own list of African countries you want to visit because that could be your next market. That should be your next expansion. And in that travel, in that engagement of people, is the access to the information you're looking for. Pay Angel is not coming over here today because they just want to sponsor the event. They're coming here because they want Kenya to become one of their big markets. And indeed, if you look at the map of Africa, the remittances from Antiwamaju and Ankuwamaju um, is coming from Europe, North America, Asia, and five countries dominate remittances. Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, Egypt, and Somalia. One could even say that 40% uh, of the Somalian population is out of its country. Yeah? And so therefore, access to information is the reason why Pay Angel will be over here today in this region trying to expand this business. Access to markets, similar thing. Travel, meet people, network. You might be struggling. I'm an angel investor in a lot of tech and tech enabled startups. And one of the things that we discovered about six or seven years ago is that a lot of Kenyan tech startups struggle here. But they go across the border to Tanzania, to Rwanda, to Zambia, to Malawi, and suddenly their businesses are booming. Why? Because sometimes the market over here is a red ocean. There's a lot of sharks fighting each other. But out there in other countries, there's some of the digital businesses that we've created here, the platforms that we have here, a massive opportunity outside um, the country, our country here. Access to finance. And a lot of people would ask, why didn't you start there? Because many SMEs and young people, when they start up their business, if you ask them, what is the single biggest challenge you have? Actually, let me ask, what is the single business challenge that you have today? Finance. Sorry? Finance. Finances. That's what you think. I want you to know, finances is probably your third or fourth. Typically, your first business, business challenge is the information. Because sometimes if you have the information, that money will flow. But access to finance is a thing. People need capital to start. The challenge sometimes is that, do we get the right capital? There's very many forms of capital, be it in debt, be it in equity, be it in grants. There's some people who are very good at grant writing and building businesses through that. So access to finance, again, we always say, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with people. Typically, most SMEs start their businesses with money from what you call the FFF, the friends, the families, and the fools. 
Yeah, the fools are people like me, angel investors who put money in many businesses of which half of them don't go anywhere. But there's a meaning behind some of that madness because we need to support the young people of Africa. We need to invest in people's dreams. We need to encourage people to try because there is no such thing as failure. In failure, you learn something. And you, um, from that learning, you can use that um, experience and exposure in a better way. And the last one was access to networks and potential strategic partnerships. I've seen businesses grow from $1,000 to revenues of 20 million US in less than five years. Sometimes we want to do everything ourselves. And in the beginning, when you're trying to build the core of your business, it is important to have a lot of control. But you get to a point of growth. If you do want to grow, at a certain point, you have to go with others. You have to bring in others. Be it people who will give you debt or people who will invest equity. There is no big business, none whatsoever on this earth, even for Elon Musk, where you don't have other investors. And so we need to learn as African SMEs that at some point in time, we need to invite, we need to invite partners, people who will hold our hands, people who will take the journey with us. It is critical. You can't do it alone if you really want to scale. So, after we've gotten the access to information, access to markets, access to finance, and access to the networks and strategic partnerships, what else do we need in order to get ourselves ready for the global stage? I want to state also that capacity development is critical. Several times, as young people, we start up a business, we run it for five years, but then you're still in the same mind frame. How do you develop yourself? How do you develop your capacity? Because running a $500,000 business is not the same as running a $50 million terminal business. You need to develop yourself. And you need to develop your teams. Down the way, technology matters. These days, I spent 20 years of my life in telecommunication, core telecommunication, and if there's one thing that I observed is that as you scale a business, it is critical to use the appropriate technology to have the appropriate systems in order for you to be able to have full 360 degree visibility of what's happening in your business. So appropriate technology is a critical bit also that we need to look at. And then the ability to influence the policy makers. The government is always a very critical part. I really wish our minister was here today. I had a couple of words for him. I'm hoping that when he comes, I'll still be able to pass them. It is very important for government to create a enabling environment for our SMEs. You know, give the corporates tax breaks to invest in SMEs. Sometimes investing is not about money. Sometimes investing, I've had a couple of startups that I've simply given them space, an open space with chairs, computers, and a little food such that they can sit and they can think and they can ideate and they can start up. Because startups need those help. They need incubation centers. You know, they need forums, events, and platforms so that they can market themselves. So it's not always about the money. Sometimes somebody can make a phone call and give you access or connect you up to another company who's doing something similar or who can buy of you and that will give you the necessary finance you want. And we need policy and regulation from the government in order to, to build up these ecosystems. Infrastructure in many of our African countries, at least we began to see the governments deal with two types of infrastructure. Your road, your railway, your ports are important. But 
over and above that physical infrastructure is the digital infrastructure. I come from a digital um, background, and it's very important these days to have very good um, digital infrastructure. I'm sure a couple of you know last week there was chaos in most of West Africa where a couple of cables were cut. And very few people could do anything. We used to think internet was that nice, um, nice to have, and it's no longer nice to have. Digital infrastructure is critical infrastructure for com companies and countries right now. And as a continent, we need to take our digital infrastructure very seriously. Lastly, I want to talk about promotion of local content and value addition. Africa has the single most expansive arable land. We cannot talk about developing Africa and developing SMEs in Africa without talking about agribusiness. Because fortunately or unfortunately for all of us, when we wake up, we must eat. It doesn't make sense for us to continually import food from outside the continent. It just doesn't make sense. We have enough land, we have enough brains, we have enough people, in terms of people with the strategic thinking, and we have enough labor. And all of us must make it a point to see how we can ensure that we make Africa food sufficient. Because this is one of the critical things that is always putting pressure on our currencies, because we are importing salt we are importing sugar, we are importing flour, we are importing maize, we are importing rice. And those of you with a sophisticated palate, we are importing spaghetti and other interesting things. And all these imports are putting pressure on our currency. And so we need to find a way of getting self-sufficient. We need to find a way of value adding. The amount of tomato paste that is imported by Nigeria, you know, could feed so many, that, that amount of money could feed so many tiny countries in Africa. And so what are we going to do? Or what do we need to do about it? And so therefore, we need to start being proud of our local brands. Be they food brands, be they fashion brands, be they brands for remittances. That ability to promote local content, that ability to promote Africa for Africans, that's the only way we're going to get to where we want to as a continent. I want to end where I started. When we think about empowering Africa's SMEs for global domination. Let that global be the continent. Most of us do not do business with countries two borders away. I was in Rwanda when the AFCTA was signed. And the reason I went, I sponsored myself, is because I understand. I say our great grandfathers were Pan Africans. Our grandfathers and fathers were Afro optimists. They were optimistic about what, where Africa would go. I choose to be an Afro catalyst to catalyze trade and business in Africa. Until we start trading with each other, until and unless we start believing in each other, until and unless we go beyond the mere rhetoric and start doing business across the borders to a significant amount, we're not going to grow Africa. Thank you and have a lovely day.